Hello everyone, so today I'm going to play Chopped. It's Saturday night, there's nothing going on, Mark's at work, he'll be home around 10, he's feeling good today, and I'm going through the kitchen, we have Jack to eat, just a couple odds and ends here and there, he's stopping at the grocery store on his way home, so I'm going to attempt, we'll see, I'll show you in a minute, we're gonna succeed or fail and we're all in this together, I hope, okay. Alright, so there's not, again, a whole lot in the house, but this is what I think I'm going to do a play on. I made a butternut squash soup um, that I served in another video, and the recipe was real simple. It was butternut squash, an apple, an onion, a tiny bit of garlic, some chicken base, whatever. So I'm going to try to do a variation on that because I still have the butternut squash. My mom went to some indoor farmer's market and got butternut squash this enormous container of mangoes. These are frozen, like solid. They were in uh, some sort of water or something. So I figure I don't have apples, I'll try mango, it's sweet. I do have garlic, I don't have any onions. I don't even have anything that you could suggest would be like an onion. Um, so oh well. Uh, this is gluten-free chicken base. Mark got it as a sample, I think. I've used it, it's good. And then as far as seasonings, I could go the fall route and do a little cinnamon, so it's cinnamony, sweet, savory, whatever. Or I have, like, chili powder, so I could go the hot, sweet, you know, mango, chili, garlic, and have that sort of theme to it. I haven't decided yet, but the first thing I do is cut all this garbage up, and peeling a butternut squash is like trying to, like, bag a greased pig. So. I'm going to do all the prep work, and then I'll bring you back once that's done. All right. And that took much longer than I thought. Butternut squash is not to be mocked. <laughs> I tried the peeler, which started to break. Then we tried the knife, which kept slipping. And then I had to use a paring knife and, like, peel the whole thing. So I cubed most of it up there. And then there's the rest. That's the mango. I hadn't even thawed because I'm just going to boil the shit out of it. And I peeled uh, one clove of garlic. I'm not going to chop it up because I kind of want just like a mild garlic flavor. And then put the rest of this in. Doesn't matter what order. Because what I'm going to do is put all of this in the pot. I went heavy on the mango. This is more mango than if I were to have made this with um, like apple or whatever. But frankly, these are ingredients that I don't know what else I would have done with. So that's everybody. I'm going to bring it over to the sink. Mark's going to kill me. There's dishes in the sink and it's on film. Oh, well. And I want just enough water to cover, but I'm going to measure because I want to add some chicken base. And the ratio is uh, one teaspoon of that base to one um, cup of water. So I just want to have an idea of how much I'm putting in so I can get an idea of how much I want to add. I'll have to adjust it at the end anyway. So I have a quart container, which will be four cups if sixth grade math serves me well and I remember. So there's four. Let's see what that does. Um, I'll go for half of this and see five, six, because the vegetables are gonna put out liquid too. I think six will probably do us okay. Is that him? I'll say six. Maybe five. I'll say five. Okay. So we're going to call that five cups of liquid. Now, when I make my butternut squash soup, I like it kind of like baby food. So I'm going to bring this up to a rolling boil. So we're going to start on high. And then when it comes up, I'll put a lid on and turn the heat down to low and let it go 45 minutes or an hour. I puree the hell out of my soups. So I'll probably hit this with either a potato masher or an immersion blender or something. Um, right before it brings up, I'm going to add, like I said, a teaspoon of this chicken base for every one cup of water that I put in. I put in five. So I'm going to go a little shy. I'll just put in four to start and then I'll check at the end if it needs the fifth. I haven't decided, but I think I'm going to go with cinnamon. I'm going to go the clumsy route. Uh, I'm going to go the sweet-ish route. 
Probably that's it. That looks like a very little bit, but I don't want it to taste like pumpkin pie. I just want a little something something in the background. And maybe, I'm thinking maybe cinnamon and crushed red pepper and not the chili powder because that maybe has a little cumin in it. And cumin is either like super delicious or smells like a locker room. And I don't know where my <laughs> taste is going to fall today if I do that. So again, up to a boil. If you do it on high and turn it down, uh, it'll turn into like you know, the really silky stuff. If you bring it over uh, medium heat to a boil and then turn it down, you'll have more like tender vegetables if you don't cook it too long and it'll be more stewy. Like, so whatever you like. We're going puree. So I'm going to go up to, I'm going to say an hour. By the time that boils and comes down, it'll, all the math will work out. And I'll bring you back then. All right. Okay, so we're at like the halfway mark, so counting down, oh, that's only a couple little bits of counting down. Oh, I forgot. Bandit needs to get his treat. Hello. You want your treat? I left it in the sink for him. Treat. There you go. There you go, pumpkin. Little snack for my little snack. Mark and I had the most morbid discussion last night. We were talking about afterlife plans for Bandit. I've never had a cat before, so my thought was that we should just get another cat that looks exactly like him and name him Bandit. Um, Mark said that's a really bad and selfish idea. So, you know, live and learn. But um, he's not dying or sick, so that's okay. So at half an hour, this is what we got. Now, a couple lessons, because I said we're learning as we go. This is what makes it chopped. I think my heat was too low when I had it on low. And... I think I added probably an extra cup, at least, of water. So, ah, steam. There we go. Um, so for the second half hour, where I have time to recoup, I'm going to turn the heat up at least to maybe three. And I'm going to leave the lid off for now. Now, if the, li if the liquid comes way, way down when it gets to a point that I'm comfortable with it, so if it dips, I want it to come flush with the vegetables, if not maybe a little low, because I could always add more later, but I want it to get down. I want the flavor to concentrate. Then I'll throw a lid back on. If it gets to the end <clears throat> and it's still not there, then we extend the cooking time. But this is where we're at for now. So again, I'm turning the heat up and I'm going to give it another half hour. And we'll be back and we'll see what happens. All right. Hey y'all, real quick, it's been 10 minutes, so I got about 20 minutes left, and 3 wasn't doing it. I put it up to 5, 5 wasn't doing it, so I put it up to 6. So we're just above medium heat, and I'm starting to get some bubbling that I like, and some ripples, and I think this will do me well. I still left the lid off. So I'm going to let it go here. If I get to 10 minutes and it's not where I want it, I'm just going to let it rip. I'm not going to put it on high, but probably pretty close just to keep it moving. Vegetables are tender at this point. They're fork tender. Um, but again, I'm going for the smooth and silky type. So that's all. Bye. All right. And that was a, the additional 20 minutes at medium, medium high. I must have turned down a little bit. That was just in the last like minute or so. So there it is. The squash has completely disintegrated. For the most part, it's a few little lumps. Interestingly, some of the mango did, some of the mango didn't. Some of it's actually quite firm. So, I am going to hit this whole thing with the immersion blender. So I'm going to drag it off the heat carefully, or haphazardly. And I have my immersion blender, so it shouldn't spit. It has a spit guard. I love this thing. Um, I use it a lot. It's good for, like, hummus, soups. I don't know if you have glass, um, not a glass, but like a plastic thing. You could probably do a smoothie in there. I know everyone has bullets and shit, but so at any rate, I'm going to hit it with this. Let's see how loud this is. That's not too bad. I 
like it really fine, so... I'm gonna give it one shot at Turbo. Alright everyone, so I tasted that soup and I would have been chopped. So, in order to try to add a few things back to it, it needed salt, so I put a little there. It needed to be a little sweeter. I, the mango didn't pick up where it, like the apple would have in the other version that I always do in the actual recipe. So I added some sugar. I would have liked honey. Honey would have been actually a lot better, but don't have it. And some cinnamon. I think I am going to take this um, the more fall-y route. So I'm going to stir all those in and give it another taste. I think that'll get me where I want to be. And I'm still in and out on crushed pepper, though the crushed pepper might not, since I'm not putting this back on the heat, maybe I should go with cayenne. I don't know. So I'm going to give this one more taste and see if I can gain back my self-respect. I gotta, like, clean that off, because it's... It'll taint my palate. You can see I'm such a foodie. That's not bad. That's not bad. Ooh, that sugar made all the difference. F your keto. I like my sugar. Mm. Okay, so we salvaged it. All right, we did. We did good. We did good. Thanks for hanging in there. I know it looked dicey. I know it looked dicey. So, so thank all of you for watching. Uh, please subscribe, uh, hit the like button, give me a thumbs up, get the alerts also, so hit the bell when you know a new video is coming out. Something lighter like this is much more enjoyable um, on certain days. This was something I was just bumming around doing and thought it would be fun. So thanks for joining me, and I'll catch up with y'all soon. Bye.